Good morning, church. Another beautiful day the Lord has made. It's Father's Day. The man who walks in righteousness, so blessed are their kids. We have, you probably noticed, we have some little bit of things going on. We've got the system installed. We're working out some kinks. We're learning to use it that I think is going to make a wonderful, wonderful addition to our ministry. I checked out our test feed yesterday, and it was so clear. You could read the In Remembrance of Me, and I'm going, I'm going to hold this up like right now, and then I'm going to go back today, and I'm going to look and see if I could read that poster <laughs> from there. Hey, Jim, zoom up on this. No, it won't turn righty-tighty, righty-tighty on the Zoom. Okay, and then back. Okay, so we're learning. And I think I'll be playing all week. But okay, so this, this week we have still our World Mission Broadcast emphasis. You have a flyer in your... That's what I was holding up, the flyer for that, to give you a little bit of information for this year's emphasis, and an envelope card if you would like to use a separate envelope. Make sure you put your name and or envelope number on there. Naz Guys, Five Guys, Naz Gals, Red Lobster. Continue in prayer for us with our technology. Continue in prayer for us with our Spanish ministry. A special hello to Jason. Good to see you. Um, as you most likely know, Sherry's brother passed away, and Jason is Ernie's nephew. So we want to keep you all covered in prayer as, as well this week and today. Be sure to remember our Wednesday prayer meetings at noon and at 6 o'clock, and they're really getting to be good, especially the evening one. If you want to come to the evening prayer meeting, we have the organ and piano both going, and we get to sing a song. So it, it's, you know, it's growing. It's growing. Thank you all for coming. I will turn the worship over to Daryl. Let's begin together this morning by singing Faith of Our Fathers. Faith of our fathers living still In spite of dungeon, fire and sword Oh, how our hearts beat high with joy Whene'er we hear that glorious word, faith of our fathers, holy faith, we will be true to thee till death. Our fathers chained in prisons dark were still in heart and conscience free how sweet would be their children's fate if they like them could die for thee faith of our fathers holy faith we will be true to thee till death faith of our fathers we will strive to win all nations unto thee and through the truth that comes from god mankind shall then be truly free faith of our fathers holy faith we will be true to thee till death faith of our fathers we will love both friend and foe in all our strife and preach thee 
do as love knows how by kindly words and virtuous life faith of our father's holy faith we will be true to thee till death think about his love Think about His goodness Think about His grace That's brought us through For as high as the heavens above So great is the measure Of our Father's love Great is the measure of our Father's love. Think about our love. Think about His goodness. Think about His grace that's brought us through. For as high as the heavens above, so great is the measure of our Father's love. Great is the measure of our Father's love. That God should love a sinner such as I should yearn to change his sorrow into bliss or rest till he had Such love, such wondrous love, such love, such wondrous love, that God should love a sinner such as I. How wonderful is love like this, that Christ should join so freely in the scheme, although it meant his death on Calvary. Did ever human tongue find no birth? And love divine that ransomed me. Such love, such wondrous love, such love, such wondrous love, that God should love a sinner such as I. How wonderful is love like this, that for a willful outcast such as I, the Father planned. The Savior bled and died Redemption for a worthless slave to buy Who long and law and grace defied Such love, such wondrous love Such love, such wondrous love That God should love a sinner such as I How wonderful is love like me heart a son. He asks me not to fill a servant's place. The far off country wanderings all are done. Wide open are his arms of grace. Such love, such wondrous love, such love, such wondrous love that God should love a sinner such as I. How wonderful is love like this. Such love, such wondrous love. Well, it's good to greet you on this Father's Day. I don't know if I'm zeroed in or not, but um, we're going to have our sermon in the sack children's time. And uh, we don't, I don't see any. Do we have any hidden children here? All of you. Are, yeah, there's a, there's a witness or two or three. Um, and a little child shall lead them. Okay. Well, I, I believe it was last year. I'm not sure. Um, let me preface this by saying that my daughters, my sons don't do this as much um, because they don't like my sarcasm. 
but my daughters ask me every Father's Day, Dad, what do you want for Father's Day? And my answer every year is a truck. A truck. I haven't got my truck yet. Um, I believe it was last year, though, I got something close. My daughter in Indiana, and she might be tuning in or watching this later, she gave me a truck for Father's Day. Now, here's the lesson for our boys and girls and for all of us today. I got to looking at this truck. It's a Ford Explorer. I'm sure that I just divided half the crowd because that's probably not your favorite. Um, when I pastured in an area in Indiana, I could not please anybody. I had GM, I had Ford, I had Chrysler, I had the whole works in my church, and nobody was happy whenever I would buy a vehicle because it wasn't the right kind of vehicle, okay? But here's what I learned from this, and here's some good lessons. First of all, this is not for children three years and under because it could be a choking hazard. That's important to know. But this one really got my attention, and this is where I'm going to zero in this little lesson here. It says, um, not intended for highway use. <laughs> it, it doesn't stop there. I'm, I'm, tell, I'm reading. I'm just reading. It says, may lead to more purchases and an eventual collection. So what is that saying to our boys and girls? I, I believe that, well, let's say we're exploring. And we want boys and girls of all ages to explore God's holy word. And realize that um, in this life, in this world, we are travelers. But we never travel alone. And when I read this line... This is not intended for highway use. I got to thinking, but as followers of Jesus, we're on the highway of holiness, highway leading to heaven, and uh, we're on that straight and narrow path, and the Lord is with us, and we're not going to be led astray because we have all of his promises. So, boys and girls, big boys and girls, Let's explore the great possibilities as we travel the highway of holiness all the way to heaven. Lord, thank you. Thank you, Lord, today that we're on that path. We're on that journey. And we know along the way we are never alone. First of all, you are with us, Lord. And we have our brothers and sisters in Christ. We are never alone. So thank you. That gives us great comfort today. That gives us joy today, and may that joy guide us as we travel down this road, and uh, thank you again today, Lord, for the wonderful privilege to explore all the possibilities you have for us. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. amen. Well, Pastor, I was paying close attention to that. And I remember a phrase that you used as you read that, that said, this will lead to eventual collection. <laughs> it's offering time. <laughs> so we're at eventual collection. We do thank you for your faithfulness and your regular giving. You have been so good at that through the past year and coming through things that were just so abnormal. And so many churches struggled with this, and ours really did not. And that's simply because you started with the right point of view and the right attitude about your giving, and we didn't have to change that. That kept on going in spite of the other changes that were made, and we really appreciate that. I want to share a few words with you from 1 John chapter 3. He says, How great is the love the Father has lavished on us that we should be called children of God. This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us. And we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. If anyone has material possessions and sees a brother or sister in need, but has no pity on him, 
How can the love of God be in him? Dear children, let us not love with words or speech, but with actions and in truth. Now, he doesn't mean we shouldn't use the right words or speech. He's meaning don't love in words and speech only. You, you've heard the phrase, I'm sure, many times in your life, he's all talk. And we all know what that means when somebody describes someone else as being all talk. In other words, there's nothing that backs up the talk. And the writer here says, don't be all talk. <laughs> Love with actions and in truth. And that's a big part of what we do when we come to this worship moment where we give. And we give because we've been loved. Our Heavenly Father has shown love to us. As John 3.16 says, He so loved that He gave His only begotten Son. And because of that love He's given to us, then we return that love. Not just in words, but in the way we live and in the actions we take. And this is just one of those. And we thank you for your giving as you come in and out in these boxes. And as some give through the mail, sending it to our box number, and uh, others give online, we appreciate all of that. And we commit it now to the Lord as we give thanks to Him. Father, thank you for your faithfulness to us and your love to us. We've heard from your word how much you loved us that we can literally be called the children of God. Lord, you have changed us from being someone who had no heavenly father to being your children. And we are so grateful for your love that you have given us. These gifts we give, they're just a part of what we give back to you, but we do give it freely, joyfully, believing that as we give, ministries will take place and lives will be changed as we give these things in your name. Amen. Let's continue singing as we sing the well-known hymn, Have Thine Own Way, Lord. Have thine own way, Lord. Have 
Spirit till all shall see Christ only always living in me. Boy, those are powerful, powerful words for us to pray today. Did you pray those words as you sang those words today? Have thine own way, Lord, have thine own way. Well, we we are worshiping the Lord today. He is worthy of our worship and our praise. And I want us to be obedient to whatever He say, says today. I, I said, Lord, I want to be obedient to you today. Uh, how about it? Would you join me in acknowledging, Lord, I want to be obedient to whatever you have for me today. Well, as we pray this morning, we're going to have a special closing prayer at the end of the service for all of our fathers. So uh, we'll spend a little extra time praying for uh, our fathers then, but I uh, want to pray today. And, and uh, first and foremost, we have a Heavenly Father that we can pray to, and He's ready to hear our prayer and and our cries out to Him. He's ready to receive our request and the burdens on our hearts. He's ready to receive our joys. And we are grateful and thankful today for so much, His provision and His blessing. And we, we just want to give Him all glory, honor, and praise as we pray today. And we want to pray one for another and pray for the, those that are sick and need a touch from the great physician. Let's keep in faithful prayer for these, our brothers and sisters. And Pray for those who have lost uh, loved ones and friends in recent days. And, and then I'm going to pray uh, this morning uh, a, a prayer of dedication to all of this new system that uh, we have installed. We have a lot of things to work through uh, uh, in the coming days, but we, we thank God for the provision and your faithful giving to make this happen. And um, we want this to be a, a tool that the Lord uses to help us to worship and help us to serve. And, and um, we're excited about the possibilities. And so we want to dedicate this, uh, this um, wonderful tool to the Lord today. So let's bow before the Lord. Daryl read that passage from 1 John chapter 3, and I had it opened as well this morning. Thank the Lord for His great love that He has lavished on us that we could be called the children of God. Our dear Heavenly Father, we're glad that we can come into Your presence today. And thank You for Your great love. Such love, such wondrous love. And uh, we know that we can love you only because you first loved us. And thank you, Lord, for taking the initiative and loving us before we even knew you. And when we were unlovable, when we were lost without you, without hope, you loved us for God so loved the world that he gave his only son for us. And... Uh, Lord, because of your great love today that you have bestowed upon us, that you have lavished upon us today, we are the children of God. And so as children, we come to you, our Father, today, giving praise, honor, and glory for your great love for us. And Lord, thank you that your love now flows through our lives as we love one another and as we love the lost, the least, the lonely, the left out that are all around us, we want to carry forth the love of Jesus, the love of our Heavenly Father as we live and serve you in this world, in these times in which we live. And we thank you for that, Lord, that great opportunity. Thank you for that mission that you've called us to, you've gifted us, you are equipping us and making us ready to do the good work, and we give thanks and praise to you. And on this Father's Day, we thank you that you are our Heavenly Father, and you love us unconditionally, and we celebrate that love today through our worship and through our service. Lord, we come before your throne. It is a throne of grace, and we pray, O oh Lord, that you would just comfort right now Sherry and 
Charlie and, and Jason as they've lost their beloved brother and uncle. Lord, would you be the God of all comfort right now for this family that means so much to us. And we know, Lord, that uh, Brother Ernie suffered greatly in his last days, but we know now he no longer suffers, for he is with you. And may that comfort uh, this family, we pray. And may we be reminded every time we lose one of the, uh, one of the ones that are your children, that uh, they are no longer suffering in these bodies and in this world and in this life, but they are with you made whole and complete. So may you give peace. And Lord, continue to be with uh, uh, the families, other families in our church, the Gamber family as well, as they continue to grieve the loss of their beloved. And Lord, we pray for those who need a touch from the great physician, and we just look over this list, and we just want to slow down right now and pray for Faye and Mark and Tammy and Diane and Josh and Nino and Judy and Dolores and Dinsby and Judith and Zach and Linda and Joyce and Ken and Jubilee and Forey and Charlie and Nancy and Mary Lou. Lord, on this prayer list, these are people who have specific needs and their physical needs we know. And there may be other needs that we do not know about, but we put our faith and trust in you, O oh Lord. And for our extended family and friends and, and for those who are serving our country and especially those that are connected to our families here at Avon Park. And Lord, for our sponsored children and for our missionary work of missions and missionaries here in Avon Park and all around the world, we're glad that we can be participants in prayer and in offerings and in service to reach our world for Jesus. So we thank you, Lord, for these, your servants, would you provide for them? Would you bless them this day? And Lord, we thank you today for the provision of this new video camera system. And Lord, it is a tool that right now we dedicate to you first and foremost to bring honor and glory to your name, that it will be a tool that will help us to worship and to serve. And right now, Lord, through the live stream and through the recording that others will watch later, people will be able to worship you that are not able to get out and come to the house of the Lord. And Lord, we pray that it will be a tool that will reach the lost and the least and the lonely and the left out. And maybe that will draw them here into this place where they can experience the body of Christ, the community, the, the, the household of faith where they can find their place and their home here worshiping alongside of us. Lord, that's our prayer. That's the, that's the deep prayer of our heart today that you would use this tool to win people to you, O oh Lord. That is our prayer passion. That is our mission. That is our purpose. And so, Lord, would you use these, your servants. And Lord, we're learning and we're growing together and there's growing pains and we're going to have glitches and we're going to have things we're going to have to uh, think about and redo and all of that. But Lord, we want to make sure that we stay focused on the main thing and that is to worship you and to serve you. Thank you for technology, but when technology is not working, we're glad that you're still working, oh Lord. And we're glad that you're on the throne 24 hours, seven days a week. We know that even on its best days, internet and technology is never that successful. But Lord, you are, you are faithful. You are our faithful Father. And so we, we, we worship you today. Happy Father's Day, dear Heavenly Father. And we are your children. And uh, we want to be obedient to you. We want to please you this day with our words and with our actions. So would you help us today? We want to hear your voice today. Speak truth and life to us. We want to respond with everything that we have, everything that we are, as an act of worship and service to you. So thank you, dear Lord on this Father's Day, that we can acknowledge your presence 
and pray in the strong name of your Son, our Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. I'm going to read before I sing one of my favorite scriptures, which has to do with our Father. Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. For in my house, in my Father's house, are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. I think about my earthly father who's been gone over 60 years now. I can't hardly wait for the time that I cross over and meet him. But most of all, I want to meet my Savior who took my sins away many years ago. And my father was there, my earthly father was there the night that I found the Lord. That is the most exciting thing to me, that he was there. So... That is my testimony this morning as I sing this morning. I'm not on the ego trip. I'm nothing. On my own I make mistakes Often slip Just common flesh and bone But I'll prove someday Just what I say I'm of a special kind For when he was on the cross I was on his mind The look of love his face thorns were on his head blood was on that scarlet robe and stained crimson red though his eyes were on the crowd that day he looked ahead in time for when he was on the cross I was on his mind he Yet he loved me He whose holy man The heavens died So unworthy Of such mercy for when he was on the cross I was on his mind for when he was on the cross 
I was on his mind. Well, technology is is a beautiful thing when it works, and um, we're we're learning together. Uh, we had quite a day Friday with my son, Matt, who helped put all this together and install it, and um, appreciate Rick Rush. He was here with us all day as well, and uh, I told Rick he was a godsend because um, um, he and Matt are able to communicate in that language that I have nothing, I have no idea what they're talking about half the time, but... Um, we're going to let this be a tool, and we've dedicated it to the Lord. We're going to keep dedicating it to the Lord. We're going to learn. There's a learning curve. Pray for Brother Jim. He has to be the most patient man on planet Earth, and I appreciate it. But he's got control of the joystick, and I think he's got all the joy right now that any person can ever have. Um, but uh, appreciate all of you. And if you want to help us, we need people on the sound and in the video part, um, and it's, it, you know, we want to train you. We need people to help us whenever these are gone on vacation. And so, um, and don't be afraid, technology, you know, you, if uh, you just got to, you got to realize that it sometimes has a mind of its own, and uh, you just got to go with it. So we're going to go with the flow. So Funny thing happened this morning. I'm going to try technology here by, I got my notes on my iPad. Um, I've been putting this off and putting it off. I wanted to try it. And uh, so I was forced this morning because the, uh, the, the connection between my computer to the printer was not making a connection today. And usually I print my notes on Saturday, but we were working and so I didn't. I was, went to go print this morning, couldn't print, so... Here we are. I'm going to try to just read my notes here on the iPad, and so you pray for me. But it's a beautiful thing to know that we can take these tools and offer them to the Lord and say, Lord, we thank you for these opportunities, these, these wonderful things that, that you helped man create. Man can't take credit for these things, but God... God gets all the honor, glory, and praise, and He can help us as we serve the Lord together. So we're continuing our We series, and today we're going to talk about we are a welcoming community. Last week we talked about we are a welcoming, um, we are a community, we are a people, and we focused on the church, and we said there needs to be this coming together of a community of believers and unbelievers coming together as we try to reach our world for Christ. And I want to keep this community idea before you because it is a great description of the church. Community means that we have a common bond, a place, a purpose, an identity, and we want to be a welcoming community. And so there's probably no greater passage in Scripture than the parable of the prodigal son, Luke chapter 15. And we're going to use this great text as our scripture this morning. Luke chapter 15, beginning with verse 11. Hear the word of the Lord. And he said, a man had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of the estate that falls to me. So he divided his wealth between them. And not many days later, the younger son gathered everything together and went on a journey to a distant country. And there he squandered his estate with loose living. Now when he had spent everything, a severe famine occurred in that country, and he began to be impoverished. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country, and he sent him into his field fields to feed swine. And he would have gladly filled his stomach with the pods that the swine were eating, and no one was giving anything to him. But when he came to his senses, he said, 
How many of my father's hired men have more than enough bread, but I am dying here with hunger? I will get up and go to my father. Aren't you glad we can get up and go to our father? And I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me as one of your hired men. So he got up and came to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and felt compassion for him and ran and embraced and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his slaves, Quickly bring out the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and sandals on his feet and bring the fatted calf and kill it and let us eat and celebrate for this son of mine was dead and has come to life again. He was lost and has been found, and they began to celebrate. Praise the Lord. The Father's love, the great love of the Father. And so we turn now to a, another part of this when the older son comes into the story. And we read, now his older son was in the field, and when he came and approached the house, he heard music and dancing. And he summoned one of the servants and began inquiring what these things could be. And he said to him, Your brother has come, and your father has killed the fatted calf, because he has received him back safe and sound. But he became angry and was not willing to go in. And his father came out and began pleading with him. But he answered and said to his father, Look, for so many years I have been serving you and have never neglected a command of yours. And yet you have never given me a young goat so that I might celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours came, who has devoured your wealth with prostitutes, you killed the fatted calf for him. And he said to him, Son, you have always been with me, and all that is mine is yours. But we had to celebrate and rejoice. For this brother of yours was dead and has begun to live and was lost and has been found. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. We are a welcoming community. And the way that we become a welcoming community is we look to our Heavenly Father who welcomed His wayward Son home. And that's where we have now the greatest example ever of God's love that needs to flow through us as we become a welcoming community. We become a welcoming community because our Heavenly Father welcomed His lost sons and daughters home. Aren't you glad for the day He welcomed you home? I wish we could have a banner. Maybe we should try this. I think it should be out here loud and bright and colorful, and it should just have these words on it. Welcome home. Welcome home. That's what a welcoming community is trying to say to the least, the lost, the lonely, the left out, those who were once in the faith who, who for whatever reason, drifted away and fell away. You can always come home, so welcome home. That's our mission. That's our purpose. And we've already read about how great the Father's love is that He lavished on us, and now we are the sons and daughters of God. And when we look at our Heavenly Father, we see now the people that we are called to be. He welcomed his prodigal son home, and we are to be a welcoming community, welcoming people to come home to Jesus. What a privilege. What an honor that is. So let me give you this morning, this is a very simple outline, five characteristics of the welcoming father that you and I need to take on as we welcome people into our lives. Now, 
part of that will be we want to welcome them into our place of worship and our, our ministries and all of that. But we, as we are learning, we have to be out in the community welcoming them into our lives by building relationships, by making connections, by asking questions and entering into dialogue and being respectful and realizing that they have differences and they don't talk like us, they don't act like us, they don't look like us, but yet we have in our words and actions a welcoming demeanor about everything that we are, everything that we say, everything that we do, we welcome. That does not mean we agree. That does not mean that we accept everything that they do, but we must be a welcoming community and we learn from the characteristics of our welcoming father how to do that. So number one, a welcoming community says... Let them go. The son came to the father and said, I want my part of the inheritance. You know what he was basically saying? Usually this did not take place until after the father had passed away. He is basically saying to his father, I wish you were dead. That's how hurtful and painful it must have been for the father to hear his son say, I want my inheritance now. And I look at you as if you are already dead. Can you imagine the pain and the hurt that was in that father? Who would, when you think about a child saying that to his father, it just, you just want to cringe and say, how can a person get to that point in their life? But he was very selfish. He was focused on his needs and his, what he wanted in his life. He was no longer concerned for his father or anybody else for that matter. And so what did the father do? He said, did he say, no, you can't have it. It's mine and uh, you're being disrespectful and I think you need an attitude check and I think, I, I think you need to rethink this. No, what did the father do? He let him go because he realized and think about Think about the, this deep truth that we know that we are free moral agents. We can choose to accept the Lord and we can choose to reject the Lord. The Lord made us that way. And so this father had to let his son go. I can't imagine the heartbreak in even doing that. And some of you may have had to do that with your children or your grandchildren. They decided to go their way and do their own thing. And you wanted to try to do everything to prevent them from doing that. But you had to come to that place where you had to let them go and put them in God's hands. And so that's what the Heavenly Father did. If we are going to be a welcoming community, we do not accept their sin. We know that they're not just rejecting us, but they're rejecting God. And so the son gets his stuff and he's off to live his life the way he wanted to live. And the father said, I got to let him go. You know what that is? That is suffering love. Do you know sometimes love causes us to suffer? The heartbreak, the pain, the agony of that. Now I want you to know as I say this, that Wednesday evening when we have Wednesday at noon and Wednesday evening when we have our prayer meetings, we're using prayer cards to guide us. And one of those prayer cards we have on there, we're praying for prodigal sons and daughters to come home, prodigal grandsons and granddaughters to come home. And I believe with all of my heart. Because in our praying, we know that they've gone their way and they're doing their thing and it's totally out of our control. But if we will just let them go, but not just to let them go, but to realize in letting them go, we're putting them in God's hands. And we're trusting the Lord to do His work. And the work that only He can do to draw them back to Himself. And yes, we need to keep praying for them and loving them and all of that. But the greatest gift of love that you and I have is suffering love where we have to realize that we've got to go the extra mile. We've got to do that which we don't want to do, but we give them over to God. A welcome community says, let them go. Number two, a welcoming community says, 
let them do. Now, I'm sure the father did not agree with anything his son did. And the scripture says he squandered his wealth. He, the word prodigal means he was reckless with his life. He was wasteful. And uh, he spent it all on, on his fleshly desires and his purposes. And guess what happened? The money ran out. Uh, you know, money will only take you so far. Wealth will only take you so far. I think he probably had the idea, I have enough in my bank account to just spend the rest of my life doing my thing. Well, life happens. There was a famine in the land. And uh, everything that uh, happens all the time in life happened to this guy. It was not, he was not just set out and he was the only one, but everybody was affected by the famine in the land and all of that. And so he lost it all. I'm glad for the grace of the Lord that never left him. That prevenient grace of God that goes before and draws people back to our Heavenly Father was at work. I'm glad that grace was at work because the scripture says he came to his senses. The father said, and I'm sure he had to let him go and let him do his thing. Again, suffering love. But aren't you glad the father never stopped loving his son? I'm sure every day he probably looked out and looked back on the trail and said, maybe this is the day he'll come home. He prayed for him. He never stopped loving him. He realized he, I had to let him go and that hurt so bad. And I got to let him do all this stuff that he's doing that is contrary to the way I raised him and the purpose of that. And yes, the world around us, they're going to do their own thing. And they're going to go their own way. And we as a welcoming community have to realize that and keep loving them and keep praying for them. And that's why we've got to have these kind of relationships built where we will have an opportunity. Because I believe, I believe with all my heart, and I'm learning this as I encounter people in my chaplaincy work that are broken and lost, and their lives are all messed up. They could care less about politics at this point. They could care less about what's going on in the world. They are heartbroken, and they need answers. And if we will be there as they do their thing and go their way, if we will enter into the picture and just love them and listen to them, I believe the Lord will give us opportunity to reach them. Well, the old boy came to his senses, the Scripture says. Sometimes you've got to hit rock bottom. And boy, did he hit rock bottom. Because think about it. This is a Jewish boy working at a pig farm. That, I don't think you can get any lower than that. He hit bottom and he was so hungry, he was going to break all the kosher laws and have him some of the stuff that was left over that the pigs were eating. That's, that's pretty low. How's that for... Doing my own thing. I'm sure when he's coming to his senses, maybe he said what a lot of people are saying today. What was I thinking? I believe the Holy Spirit is faithful in those moments. And when somebody says those words, the Lord is working on their heart. He came to his senses. That's not something that he come up with on his own. The Holy Spirit, God was working. He remembered his father's love. He remembered what life was back home. All of that came back to him. That's not because he was so, his mind just came alive on his own and said, wow, I've really messed things up. No, it was God working in his heart. It was the father's love working in his heart. Father let him go. Let him do what he was doing. But he never stopped loving them. So he plans this Rehear he, this speech that he rehearses here in this part of the story. And I want you to see this because it's, it's crucial to understand how we as a welcome community, how we need to enter into uh, these kind of um, 
these kind of situations where people are, they're, they're realizing their life's a mess and they're broken and they're hurting and they're asking questions and they're crying out. And they're even doing things like playing the blame game, trying to blame somebody else for all their problems. You know what? On any given day of the week, you can blame somebody for what's going on with your life. You can find somebody else to blame. Um, and sometimes, if you're not careful, you can even blame the pastor, you know. Amen or oh me, okay? And sometimes I deserve it, by the way. But anyhow, he came to his senses, and here's his speech. He says, well, he asked the question, how many of my father's hired men have more than enough bread, but I am dying here with hunger? So here's what he says. He, 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 he starts working on this. I will get up and go to my father and will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven, and in your sight I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me as one of your hired men. And so hold that thought right there. Verse 20 says, he got up and headed back home. Aren't you glad? You can always go home. Again, right out here in the front of the church, we ought to have a big sign saying, you can come home, welcome home. Because there's always a chance, as long as you're breathing, as long as we're on this side of eternity, there is hope. There is hope for the least, the lost, the lonely, the left out that are all around us. Don't ever give up on them. Don't ever give up on them. And I've had people in my life, I'm thinking of my older brother who went his wayward way with drugs and alcohol for so many years. And I, I hate to say this and admit it, but I gave up on my brother. I even said to him, I'm through with you. You've lied to me. You've done all this to our family over the years. I'm done with you. But I'm glad that the Lord was not done with him and he got gloriously saved and turned his life around and he's serving the Lord today. I believe what's impossible with man is possible with God. And whenever I see my brother and think about where he is today, I thank God that the Heavenly Father never gave up on him and he came back home. Praise the Lord. So he has this return speech. So we get to number three. A welcome community says, let them come. The old boy had enough of his father's love left down deep in there. What he was trained as growing up and what he observed in his father, he realized, and again, this is the Holy Spirit being faithful, I can go home. Now I realize, he says, I, I squandered it all. I don't deserve anything. He, he was being truthful there. I don't deserve to be called a son but all the hired people on the father's farm, they have plenty to eat. I'm just going to go home and say, can I have a job? That's all he was going to do. He was not expecting anything. He knew he had lost it all, doing his own thing, going his own way. Let them come. Let them come. I believe the father was waiting once again every day. Maybe he got out and looked down the lane. He was waiting daily. And the scriptures remind us of how faithful the father was because so he got up in verse 20, came to his father, but while he was still a long way off, <laughs> I don't know how far, I don't know how old the man was, he, uh, his vision was pretty good because from afar off, the father said, saw him. And listen to what he says, listen to what happens. His father saw him and felt compassion for him, and he ran and embraced him and kissed him. Let him come home. Let him come home. The father is waiting. The compassionate love. He knew, the father knew him, just like Brother Richard sang, but he still loved him. The father's love never stopped, even though he had to suffer. His love had to suffer for, and we don't know how long this took, how many years or whatever. But I'm glad for the long suffering love of the Father. Okay, dads, we need to be long suffering in our love for our children. And that means it's difficult 
And some of you have gone through the difficulties of wayward children and you're praying and your hearts are broken and you're suffering that love. Get up every day and say, maybe they'll come home today. And then pray, Lord, send them home today. We're ready for them to come back home. And that's what happens. So here's, the, here's, the, here's one of the things I, I've noticed this um, uh, again in reading this, but you remember the speech. He says, I will get up, go to my father's house, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven, and in your sight I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me as one of your hired men. Okay? Two parts of that he got out when he met his father. The last part he did not. Did you notice that in reading the text? So, he starts out, Father, I have sinned against heaven, and in your sight... That's the first part. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. And the last part where he is going to say, but make me one of your hired servants, it never got out of his mouth. The father turns to the the servant and says, kill the fatted calf. Bring the robe and the ring. We're going to have a party. He never got the line out about he was going to ask the father for a job. No, he never got that out. The, the, the father totally ignored everything he said and said, we are going to have a party. You know what I think will get us all a lot of joy, but also I think it will help us in our worries and our fears about reaching our culture and reaching the community today. We need to have some parties around here. I mean some parties. And I think we could start with you and me. Can you remember the day when you came to the Lord? What a great day that was, that was for you. The Lord forgave you of your sins and your name was written in the Lamb's book of life and there was great rejoicing and there was peace and you, you experienced forgiveness and, and the great love of God. You remember the day you were saved. I think we need to have parties and I, I know when mine is and I, 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 can, I can tell you the day. Some people you may not know the day. Well, just pick a day that's close by. January 6th. 1980. That's my spiritual birthday. I was just, I was 14 years old. A month later, I would turn 15. And I remember that service. I was under so much conviction. I knew I was lost. But there were people who were showing me what a welcoming community is all about. They loved me. They prayed for me. And I remember in that Sunday evening service, I made my way down to the altar and they beat me on the back. And you know how it works. Some said, say yes. and Some said, say no. So I said, yes and no. I don't know what I was praying, but I said, yes and no. And they taught me and led me in the sinner's prayer. And I did pray that through. And I believe all things were passed away. All things became new on that day. I was gloriously saved. That was my spiritual birthday. But here's what I learned later. I didn't know the scripture. And, and not only was the father and all the people he called the servants to have the party ready, but guess what the scripture says? There was rejoicing around the throne by the angels when one came home. And so on that day, so I think we need to celebrate our spiritual birthdays around here. And maybe you just need to mark it on the calendar and you need to tell all your family and friends. Maybe we just should have cake and ice cream after service on once a month celebrating spiritual birthdays. And then when somebody really gets gloriously saved, we need to have a big party. I don't know if we can kill the fatted calf, but we can come pretty close. And maybe we need to have a robe that we just let people have put on for a little bit. And take their picture. And maybe we should get a ring and put it on their finger. Maybe we should get them some nice shoes and let them put it on. We take pictures and we celebrate and we have a party. Why? Because you can always come back home. And when they come home, what a day that is. What a day that is. Number four, a welcome community says, let them know. Did the father not tell him? Well, I told you so. I told you not to leave. And you know, you broke my heart. And I've suffered greatly over your decision. And you should be ashamed of yourself. And you should, you should, I don't remember hearing any of that in the story. And sometimes we do that as human beings because we're hurt. 
by the sins of those that we love and we want to tell them, I told you so and you broke my heart and you made a mess of your life and we just make things worse instead of better by doing that. No, let's interrupt the old boy right in the middle of the conversation. Father, I have sinned. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. I kill the fatted calf. Bring the robe and the ring and sandals and put on a seat. My son, who was dead, is alive. Who was lost is now found. That's the response. We don't need to spend any wasted time saying, I told you so. If we could just rid that from our vocabulary, think about the people that we could reach. But sometimes we drive them further and further away by continuing to remind them of their sin. And yes, If they're under conviction, let the Holy Spirit remind them of their sin. And we stay out of that. We just need to be a part of celebrating. So he let them know. The robe means honor. Think about this. He he wasn't worthy to be a part of the family again, but the robe meant honor. The ring meant authority. He didn't deserve any authority. The sandals meant freedom. And the fact that he declared him again his son, sonship means even though he was unworthy, he was never worthless. And think about it. We are unworthy. None of us deserve the love and the grace.